What up, man? It's your boy, Trent Setter Sense. Of course, Chosen Journey. Got a special, special queen in the building, man. Uh, this woman right here, she got a new single going crazy. She got an album. She got a show coming up. Uh, she got a testimony. She got a story. Uh, it's going to be a fun conversation. Anike. Hey, what's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I'm blessed to be up in the A again. So it's a great time. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Pray for me. Yeah, so I really love that record because I feel like it's almost like a description of me as a person. So I was born in Nigeria, but I grew up in America as well. And so I think it's really cool because I like grew up obviously like being American, being black, all that stuff. But at the same time, like I have my roots of Nigerian culture. So mm. you get both. Like you get the African flair, but then you also get the raps in there as well. And it's just a record talking about like, you know, sometimes you need your friends to pray for you, bro. Like sometimes mm -hmm. life it's trying to beat you up. And so um, it's really a record that's talking about how, like, sometimes I had some lows and, like, the encouragement that God told me to say to myself to, like, you know, encourage me of who, how he sees me, how he views me, mm. and to, like, get out of that get out of that place and then also just reminding people, like, hey, intercede for your friends, pray for your friends, and, like, just kind of show them the results of, like, my friends prayed for me and then I did mm. decide to reclaim the victory and, like, decided to be, believe who God says I was mm. and step into what he already had available for me, so. That's dope. Um, I've been seeing you've been talking about reclaiming the victory. Yeah. Um, was there a point like that Anike felt as though like what talk to me, like the victory wasn't there or yeah. kind of dive into that? Yeah, I think last year I was just going through like depression, man. Wow. So I would just go through seasons where like I guess it felt like oppression type stuff. And then like I would advocate for myself and I felt like even after advocating for myself, it still didn't work. And so I think stuff like that would, like, just leave me, like, feeling small, feeling dejected type stuff. And so, um, yeah, man, like, eventually it just kind of got to me. And then I noticed, too, like, there was, like, a lot of just uh, things I would, like, conceal, per se, just because I think as a Christian it's hard to navigate because you want to forgive people. Mm. But then you have to find a healthy balance of, like, what's forgiveness? What is, like, hey, you got to handle this in, like, wow. or, like, what is reconciliation versus, like, this person doesn't need to be in your life anymore. And so I think for me, I was just, like, holding a lot inside to the point that, like, my body actually shut down and, mm. like, my jaw wouldn't open anymore. Really? Yeah. And so at that point, it was kind of like, you either going to let life take you out or you going to address the situation. And so... Yeah, I really chose to lean into God. I'm so thankful. Um, and so I leaned into, like, God and who he says I am and, like, how God says that we're victorious. You know, the blood of Jesus covers everything. And I had my friends pray for me as well. And so little by little, I was able to really believe, like, the word of God again. Yeah. And, yeah, I was able to see that joy again, so, like, come back. Because I remember during that time, like, I didn't even recognize myself type stuff. And so it's really beautiful seeing, like, the joy kind of come back into me Um yeah, seeing me return back to, like, the child of God who I am mm. and just seeing even the prayers be effective of people being like, man, like, I don't like seeing you like this. Like, you're always someone who's so joyful. Like, I want to see you smile again. So it was really cool, like, seeing, like, all of that be effective. And, like, at the time, how you couldn't see the sun anymore type stuff, seeing, like, how God helped me prevail to the other side where you really could see the joy and you can, like, look back and be like, dang, that's crazy that I was depressed. Like, wow. yeah. So was this the time, like, when you you know, at this point, was this where the name change? Ironically, began? no. Okay. So around that time, it was like whenever I wrote, um, I did a remix to Maverick City's Firm Foundation. Mm. And so it was around that time when I was sad because that verse, I'm actually talking about how I'm sad. I said I had folks trying to take me out, trying to dim my belief. So um, that was around the time where I was like really low. And it's crazy how God used that song because I wrote that song out of obedience to God mm. just to be like, all right, I'm going to just write it and put it on the internet not expect it much. And then even God used that to like get Grammy nominations and stuff like that. And mm. so even that was God reminding me like, hey, I still see you even through what you're going through. Um, and so, yeah, like the name change came way after. So it was that catalyst of the whole sadness that led to the work being done. Mm. And then after the work was done of like, you know, leaning into God, getting refined, praying, fasting, all that stuff. Yeah. After that and after the healing that's when God was like, all right, now it's time for a new chapter. And then that's whenever the name change came. Wow. So Anike, mm -hmm. um, for those that don't know, can you just, you know, cause I know you've been talking about the name change and mm -hmm. telling people uh, the definition, but for those that don't know, can yeah. you, you know, just yeah. tell them again. So yeah, it's hyphened um, with my middle name. So Ire Olua Anike. And it means the goodness of God. We have something to care for, cherish, and, you know, not take for granted. And so I think it's really beautiful because it's like God reminded me, like my life should reflect the goodness of God everywhere I go. And it's like reminding me, like, don't take 
God's goodness for granted mm -hmm. in your life. And like, even like my life is a reflection of the goodness of God. So being like, don't let people take you for granted as well. Like make sure you have self-respect, like everywhere you go, stuff like that, because you're also, you know, a child of God. Mm -hmm. And so remember that, you know, with your self-worth and stuff. So yeah, I think it's really beautiful of like God reminded me like, nah, like you're a prized possession. You're someone who I care for. And so just reminding me like to walk with that boldness and confidence as well, like everywhere I go type stuff. Mm -hmm. Love it, man. Anike's in the building. This is Chosen Journey. And, okay, so we're talking about Anike. Can mm -hmm. you go into the definition of your former name, Wande? Yeah, so my former name, Wande, was actually a shorter uh, version of, like, the full name, which was Ye Wande. And so in Nigeria, um, in Yoruba specifically, a lot of names are, like, words and almost like prophecies over your life. Um, and so Ye Wande, Ye means the mother one day means has come back mm. and so yeah so basically it was like the concept of reincarnation so a lot of people wow. now yeah and so it's crazy too because i realized that when i was young but i never like processed it and i like of course now as a christian i, I don't stand <laughs> i don't stand for reincarnation but i never process like oh your name is like perpetuating that and like almost celebrating that wow. and so i think that's one thing that god brought to my remembrance whenever you know i had like my healing and everything and he was like hey let's revisit the name and I was like, oh, snap, that is crazy. And he was like, yeah, I want you to let that go. And it's just, like, unfortunate because I was doing a lot of research and, like, Yoruba culture is, like, heavily rooted in, like, idolatry and different things. And, like, wow. even the history itself, the people had to reclaim even, like, the language and be like, I don't want this, like, you know, celebrating these idols. We're going to reclaim it to celebrate Yahweh. And mm. so, yeah, it's, like, it's, it runs, like, super deep of, like, how, how far it goes type of stuff. That's so crazy, man, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, will people will celebrate the culture mm -hmm. over their faith. Mm -hmm. um, can you give me like your take on that? Yeah, I feel like that's something God's been walking me through. Because mm. even like you go to hip hop culture. Wow. So like it's like I feel like that's a struggle with so many Christians where it's like I don't want to lose my culture to follow Christ. But I think God has been showing me you have to separate the two. Okay. And there's good and bad. So okay. I think, one, he wants you to be who you are. Like, he made you born into certain things for a reason, certain areas, certain neighborhoods, all that. So the culture is beautiful. But he, I think he also wants you to identify, like, what parts of the culture is not good and let those things go. So I think the best example I can give is, like, the Israelites. So God says the Israelites are the chosen people. Mm -hmm. And he wants them to be the Israelites. But... Even in their life, you see over and over again, like he's setting them free from slavery. He's doing all these things. And he's like, the only thing I want you to not do is just stop worshiping these idols. Mm. And then even when they're set free, they on their way to the promised land, they get tired. And they're like, you know what? I miss slavery. At least I could have, you know, done a little something, something. Maybe I had different types of variety of food. And so they're like, you know what? Let's just build our calves. Let's build our idols because maybe they'll make something shake faster than what's going on right now. Right. And God's like. I told y'all not to do that, but that was their culture. Like, so like, they're just going back, back back to like what they know. And so I think, yeah, there's some beautiful things in culture. Like hip hop culture is, is fire, but there's also some negative things that we're all aware of, like degrading women all the time and like referring to them, like objects, like literally music videos. They're like, Oh, I need a prop. Let's get some women. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, stuff like that. Um, and of course, like the things like drugs and stuff, but even how that goes deeper of like how it even got there. Cause people were trying to survive, but now it's like, okay, now that we are surviving, we got to, now that we're educated, we got to let that go. And right. so it's like, yeah, I think it's hard whenever things, some things were outside of your control. Some people did what they had to do to, you know, live, to thrive, to get to where they are now. But I think once you're aware of like more education and you're aware of like, oh, these things actually go against the faith I have. Like you have to be willing to let them go while still being yourself. Wow. Anike is in the building um, sitting here talking about uh, the project and the, the music and speaking of the music, um, you know, with Pray For Me, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, but how your music has evolved, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's on a global scale. It has a global sound. Um, do you feel as though, does Anike have, like, a responsibility um, to feel like that's, you know, it, you're a vessel to take yeah. it there? Yeah, I think definitely. I feel like I'm taking my responsibility way more seriously now of, mm -hmm. like, fully representing, like, my full self everywhere I go. Um, I think just showing my femininity in my music mm -hmm showing my African heritage in my music, but also showing like the black side, like in my music. So I think, yeah, I, I want to bring my full self everywhere I go. I feel like God gave me a gift where like I'm well liked in various spaces. So it's like when I'm in white spaces, I'm not going to just like 
forget all the wraps and forget like, you know, I'm not going to change my hair, stuff like that. So I think um, I'm bringing my full self there. But also whenever I'm in other black spaces as well, too, like not abandoning my Nigerian side as well. So I think it's really cool um, where God is like, hey, I, I had you have unique life experiences growing up. And I had you be raised by different people growing up because I wanted to use you to touch all these various different types of people um, whenever you were older. So, yeah, I think it's cool. And I, I take that responsibility seriously, but I think it's beautiful because I get to be a vessel to so many different types of people yeah. and share the story of the gospel. Yeah. I love it. Um, talk about the rise of Christian hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it, it's getting a mainstream light. Yeah. And you're one of the people that, hey, that are bringing it, bringing it to a mainstream light. Um, talk about it. Oh, I think it's really beautiful that Christian hip hop is having a rise. Like, I think it's also like a testimony to people being bold. Like, there's a lot of people, some dudes out here like Alex Jean, and Kayla mm. Gordon, like being real bold on the internet and being like, hey, man, I'm good at this marketing thing. So y'all going to get this music <laughs> and y'all going, you know. And so I think it's beautiful because I think that pureness in your boldness is used because like that's how you get things on a global scale. And I feel like stuff like that is helping the whole genre at large grow. And I think it's really cool because whenever you meet these people in real life, like they really love God for real. So I think on top of that is like, it's dope because it's like the music is fire. Mm. It's really pointing you to God. And then on top of that, you have people who are like prepared as well. Mm. So then now like people really getting disciple, people really getting the gospel and people are, it's like breaking down barriers of like, Oh, like, sorry, I couldn't put your song on programming because it don't sound good. But now it's like, Hey man, it sounds good. So I guess <laughs> you don't put in the rotation type stuff. So. Right. Uh, bestie Bible study. Hey, talk about it. Um, that's, a, that's a, how often do you do the best? best Bible so it's kind of like sporadic per se, I guess, okay, <laughs> like spirit led okay. type vibes. Um, so, but yeah, so I have my page, the what's the bestie page and we do bestie Bible studies and yeah, honestly, that's just the thing to be able to teach people about the Bible. Right. I noticed a lot of people who are my listeners, um, they would say stuff like, yeah, man, like I didn't know anything about God. Mm. But then I found your music and it made me be interested to like want to tap more into the Bible and stuff like that. So I started doing a thing where I would maybe read a chapter of the Bible online mm. and then I break it down like in regular, you yeah. could say Gen Z, you know, <laughs> millennial terms. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> I just break it down to make it understandable. And a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't know the Bible talked about that. Or, right. I didn't know that story was there. So I really enjoy it. Uh, I feel like for me, it's even helpful because it's even an encouragement to read the Bible even more because I love teaching. Right. So then that even encourages me to go deeper and read more stories. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And like, you know, I get to encourage women as well in their walk. Uh, I have like a little Instagram channel where I'll send just encouragement on various things from the Bible studies to like things about hair, modesty, all of that mm, stuff. And yeah. so it's really cool. Like just being able to be myself but encourage other girls who are in their walk and even other people too in general just in their walk with God. Um, talk about Anike's favorite scripture. All right. My favorite scripture. <laughs> I know you got a lot. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Uh, I think my favorite scripture is Matthew six thirty three, mm. Uh, and it says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will follow. Uh, I really like that a lot because I feel like when we're our best versions of ourselves is whenever we remember, like, it's not about us, it's about God and seeking his kingdom and his will and his righteousness. And so I really love it because it simplifies things of like, seek that. And you ain't got to stress about everything else in life. Uh, everything else you need is going to follow. And that whole chapter of Matthew, chapter six, really just talks about not stressing about life. So life tries to stress you out. Your job will try to stress you out. People, family, yeah. all that. But don't worry. Just seek first God, his kingdom, and mm -hmm. everything you need to provide, everything you need for your life vision, it'll follow. Mm. Album is self-titled. Yeah, yeah. Correct. And it, give me the date. Is it August August 30th. August 30th. <laughs> I'm thinking of the show. The yeah, show was October 13th. 13th okay. Yeah. So we got the album. We got the show. Yeah. Uh, talk about the show. You have this headlining show. Yeah. Yeah. That's diving. Too. Yeah. So, you know, Atlanta, make sure you pull up in the <laughs> building, you know. So I have a headlining show um, at Vinyl. Uh, it'll be October 13th. And I'm super excited about that. It's my first headlining show. Mm. Yeah. And so put on by like me. And I'm really excited just for people to see the artistry. And I think it's cool because whenever you put it on, you get to make the rules. So, you know, I love to encourage people. So you're going to get that too. I'll be able to bring my friends out, um, and, you know, different artists like that and highlight what they're doing because they be killing it. And yeah, I think it's going to be a great time. Like, you know, I love doing things in excellence. So, you know, you're going to get the dancing, you're going to get the raps, you're going to get the singing. So definitely don't want to miss it. It's going to be, yeah, fun, legendary time. I love it. Um, Every time we close out an interview, I always like the artist to do a salvation in like 60 seconds yeah. or less. So 
Anika, you got the floor. All right, so salvation, yeah. So salvation is basically, amen, we were all sinners. And because of that, the consequences is death and separation from God. But God was like, I ain't going to let you go out like that. So what he did was he sent his son to die Mm. on the cross. And he paid the price that we couldn't pay. And what that did was his blood, you know, fully was the perfect sacrifice and what it did was it united us back to the Father. And now you have the opportunity to be reunited with God. And you don't have to pay that price. Because that would be hard. You know, sacrificing the animals, doing all that that they had to do in the Old Testament. You ain't got to do that no more. Just, you know, <laughs> say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And you can come back to the Father. Yeah. There it is. Anike, thank you so much. Uh, album um, dropping. Um, show dropping. Pray for me, which is going crazy. Um, I'm excited. Thank you so much. Anike, Trent Sutter's hey. Chosen Journey. It's lit.